There have been times in history when science, where silence becomes louder than any other explosion. One of these is this. Among them, it wasn't a dying asteroid, star, or a newly formed galaxy that caused the warning. The silence was itself. The James Webb Space Telescope, orbiting and observing the universe from a million miles away, deeper into space than any other before. The human-made instrument was observing a sector of space previously thought to be empty to the core, a dead space between galaxies and omission from the cosmic map. What? Then, it found there shattered that assumption. The quietest section of the cosmos, a shadow was seen by the telescope that was neither illuminating nor reflecting it. It was eating it up. And then, something even more bizarre transpired. That darkness which moved deliberately and slowly as if it was aware we were observing. What the telescope recorded after that compelled a group of astrophysicists, cosmologists, and mathematicians to abandon known models of totality and reality. Because of this, no comet, no pulsar, no black hole. This was a different thing, a factor that thinks something that reacts and possibly something that keeps in mind. This is the narrative of what James Webb found hidden in the depths, an end goal so frightful in its behavior and so out of place in its physics that researchers have started whispering the unimaginable. What if it is not at all a part of our universe? It all began during a deep field survey near the vasty Rydnus supervoid, a space that is almost mythic and famous for its enigmatic cold spots and peculiar low galaxy density. During calibration, using infrared sensors to map the galaxy project, James Webb's telescope picked up an anomaly that was to symmetrical to be natural but chaotic enough to be artificial. Rather than seeing faraway galaxies or interstellar gas, the telescope saw a flawless circle of silence. No light escaped it. No light curved around it. This was not lensing due to gravity. It was, more or less, an omission from the fabric of the universe as a whole. Imagine dropping ink into a glass of still water and watching. Instead, the water vanish. That's what the data showed, not just a void, but an area of matter without any physical laws. The initial hypotheses suggested that it might be a previously unknown type of black hole, but the mass calculations didn't add up. There was no radiation or X-ray emission, merely a cold, gloomy gravitational ripple, an area of complete stillness that produced absolutely no sense. After that, over a number of days, the perimeter of that object began to fluctuate, not like an orbiting celestial body, but similar to something breathing. Researchers from a variety of institutions started looking into the light echoes encircling the anomaly, and what they discovered was more alarming than any black hole or supernova could ever be. The flickers of distorted light that rippled away from the object were not random. They followed a precise sequence, intervals that matched prime numbers. First two, then three, five, seven, eleven. As if the object was more than just a thing, it was signaling. However, signaling to whom? Additionally, the signal was not electromagnetic. There was no radio, gamma, infrared, or any other known wave. Spacetime was disrupted as a result itself. The largest Webb telescope, recorded by sensitive gyroscopes, detected microscopic shifts that coincided with each signal burst as though something was influencing the reality structure on a fundamental level. It wasn't just breaking the astrophysics regulations, it mocked them. Mathematicians were brought in. Quantum physicists pored over the data. What did they find? These were not natural pulses, but traces of intention. No known stellar object acts in this manner, not quasars, not matter clumps, not even rogue planets. The rhythm and precision were surgical, distinctly fabricated, and some considered that it might not be a sign of something conscious but still alive. The unexpected event then occurred. In a follow-up inspection carried out precisely 27 days after the first detection, the James Webb team observed a displacement. The object, once thought to be stationary, had shifted not through space but through dimensions. It didn't drift like a comet or speed up like a ship. It blinked like a flash that moves from one place to another as if gliding through the fabric of the universe, not traversing it. 
It came back just 0.00 for off from its original position, an imperceptible fraction to the human eye but catastrophic to the calculations of scientists. Because anything that can displace itself without leaving a trail indicates that it is unconstrained by the speed of light. It means it's not bound by time. The only known parallel to this kind of behavior in quantum theory is real, instantaneous responses from entangled particles over great distances. However, this was not subatomic. This was a structure the size of a small moon acting as though the rules of traditional physics were merely a suggestion. When astronomers studied the movement, they found something even more terrifying. The pattern of its reappearances resulted in a spiral pointing inward toward Earth. After four months of investigation, the team was no longer asking whether the object posed a threat. They wanted to know if it was thinking. Geometric designs around the anomaly began to stabilize into fractal-like structures, shapes that repeat themselves and echo biological systems, not like bones or organs, but like neural pathways. The more the telescope looked, the more the patterns changed to fit the orientation and correction by sensors themselves in real time, resembling, in some ways, it was getting used to being watched. A chilling term was developed by scientists for this behavior, the geometry that responds. Some even hinted that the object might be a one-of-a-kind dimensional antenna, or even worse, a living construct designed not to travel but to maintain its position while waiting for a purpose. A trained AI model to simulate the recognition of alien patterns when fed the data from the telescope failed. It looped, froze, and finally returned a single word in its error log, recognized. Despite the message's clarity, no one dared to say it out loud. It is not a discovery, it's a reply. After collecting more data for weeks, the web team noticed a curious phenomenon, not in the object itself, but in the field surrounding it. An overview radiation shift, barely noticeable at first, began to emerge. Opposed to cosmic microwave bursts or the background of stars' radiation, this signal was strangely in sync with the object's pulses, but they slowed down as if we were. Witnessing an echo, analysis, of the spectrum confirmed a chilling fact, the signal contained harmonic layers that weren't supposed to be present. Frequencies, not sorted by random but interspersed, emitted a pattern resembling musical chords. Some scientists started referring to it as the Song of the Void, but others weren't as poetic. They asserted that such a signal is almost impossible to manufacture without a deliberate mechanism behind it not a chaotic star formation, but an engineered pattern. Even more troubling, harmonics in the waveform were not stable. They had a slight reaction to the web shifts in position. This resulted in a frightening hypothesis there was no passive signal. It involved interaction. It was observing, measuring, and echoing as if the goal was more than just broadcasting it was observing. Despite the increasing panic behind the scenes, a collection of conceptual mathematicians was brought in to analyze the pulse's numerical structure. When that occurred, everything changed. Hidden within the signal's timing sequence was a mathematical concept embedded in a constant that does not occur naturally in known events in the universe. The prime lemur spiral, a set of prime numbers arranged in a spiral design that has long baffled theorists about its strange connection to nature. But here, it was precisely repeated at intervals. Between the distortions and anomalies, it was thought by some scientists to be a universal language, comparable to a mathematical Rosetta Stone a calling card or, even worse, an identifier. If that was placed by someone or something, a signature there would indicate that they comprehended the underlying structures of our reality. And what came next drove even more fear. When the order was formed into a three-dimensional graph, it revealed a complex helix, one nearly identical to the human genome's double helix. Coincidence, perhaps. Yet, when the numbers were analyzed, scientists figured out the timing intervals and the pulses corresponded to the genetic codes used in our own biochemistry. There wasn't just something watching, someone knew what it was looking at us and may have known us before we ever viewed it. When that occurred, everything began to quiet. Web data that is freely accessible streams experienced a sudden delay. 
Access to research observatories' logs began vanishing, and prominent scientists involved in the study of anomalies began resigning from their positions. Press releases from the agencies involved changed their tone. Once stuffed with enthusiasm and openness, they evolved into bureaucratic, evasive, and vague. The information that several international space agencies were compelled to withdraw into impromptu meetings such as the European Space Agency, NASA, and even private organizations like Blue Origin and SpaceX not because it presented an immediate danger, but because no one could verify that it was not already present. There were a lot of theories. Was it some kind of probe, a sentry, a warning beacon? The moment it was found was chilling in itself. It only appeared after the instruments we developed were capable of seeing it, which meant that it either existed continuously or waited until we were ready. But possibly, this was the most worrying aspect. Deep spacecraft from decades ago, such as Voyager and New Horizons, were long gone close to this area without finding a thing. This means the object is either disguised as standard instruments or, before, it wasn't there. As usual, the final act occurs silently. On the 48th day of targeted web observation, prior to the telescope being scheduled to switch to another area in space, something changed. The anomaly's signature disappeared, no pulses, no distortions, simply static. However, before that silence settled in, web sensors captured one final image, a composite in infrared light, unlike anything seen before. It was not a shadow. There was no distortion. It was a perfectly angular, symmetrical shape, proportioned, resembling an inverted sigil in space. It also lasted only three frames to short for complete decoding. But fabricated intelligence analysis confirmed the structure was not random. It was geometric, made up of interconnected triangles, circles, and lines forming a recursive pattern. Then it disappeared. Since then, nothing has returned. Yet the data remains. There is still silence. And perhaps the most frightening of all is the possibility that whatever this was, it didn't leave. It simply stopped letting us see it. So, what did James Webb really see out there? A mute observer in the cosmic dark. A signal intended for those advanced enough or foolish enough to notice. Or maybe just a glitch in reality that we were never meant to decipher. The terrifying truth is this, the more we dig, the more we stare into the void, the more it appears to react. What we once believed to be an empty canvas is now starting to appear to be a mirror. And possibly, just maybe, something on the other side has finally seen us looking back. This discovery isn't about space anymore. It concerns what we are unable to understand. It concerns the possibility that we've started a discussion with an intelligence that doesn't use language but geometry, rhythm, and silence. And the worst part? We still do not know whether it is attempting to communicate or to warn us. There is one certainty. James Webb did more than just collect data. It unlocked a door. And what lies in wait behind it could change everything we thought we knew not just about the universe but about ourselves.